Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Rogue Trader has finally been released, and that means it's time to get into character builds. Super excited about this, and I would love to hear what builds all of you are running for your first playthrough. Let me know in the comments below. In case the information here is confusing, there are three links in the description to help you. One is to a spreadsheet that lays out all 55 levels of this build. There are also two links to my mechanics breakdown for the officer and master tactician archetypes, which Lord High Slander will be using. If none of those resources or my video answers your questions, please leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. My first set of builds will be for the characters I plan to use in our Imperialist Let's Play run. The first episode of it should have dropped early this morning and there'll be a link for it down below. Let's start with my main character, Lord Highslander. He deeply believes in the Imperium, so I have selected Imperial World as my home world. And this lets me take a plus 10 bonus to fellowship right off the bat, along with access to a couple of useful talents that we'll talk about later. His origin is noble, and this provides me with the You Serve Me talent, which lets you designate one character as your servant, providing them with a bonus to characteristics and critical hit chance when attacking an enemy you dealt damage to last turn. You should always use this on your best damage dealer, and whenever possible, the two of you should attack the same target. Noble completely revolves around buffing your servant, which makes it a perfect complement to our officer archetype. Officer gives you voice of command, which provides one character a bonus to characteristics that scales with your fellowship bonus for one round, along with letting you use officer abilities on the character from any distance. Once you have used this on an ally, you cannot target the same ally with this ability for two rounds. Many of your officer abilities gain additional properties when used on a character that has this effect. For characteristics, you want to put 10 points into fellowship since that will be your main focus throughout the run. Then you also want to put 10 points into ballistic skills since you're going to be a sniper. And then finally put 10 points into willpower since it comes up in multiple conversations. Long term, dodge doesn't matter to you so perception isn't worth investing in and your character will automatically go first so agility doesn't help that much either. Keep this ranking throughout the game so increase fellowship whenever possible, then ballistic skill, and then willpower. At level 2 you are able to increase one skill. Fellowship automatically increases most skills related to conversation, and the most important one is persuasion, so focus on that first. When it's not available, Lore Imperium is also very important, so it should be your second option. While it is an intelligence skill, there are multiple items that make it scale off fellowship instead that you should equip. At level 3 you get Bring It Down, which gives one character an extra turn with limited action points and no movement points. This is a perfect way to let your main damage dealer pump out even more carnage. If they kill an enemy while under this effect and voice of command, then they'll receive additional momentum. At level 4 you get your ultimate ability Finest Hour, which grants one ally an extra turn with full action and movement points. There is also no attack limit during this turn. Bring it down on steroids, this ability is fantastic and can really turn the tide. Level 4 also provides your first opportunity to choose an archetype talent and I would start with Commanding Voice, which most importantly extends the range of Voice of Command by 6. As a sniper, you'll be way in the back, and deploying VOC from that distance will be very important. Remember, once VOC connects, all of your officer abilities will automatically reach your ally. At level 5, you can pick from a list of common talents, which means archetype talents aren't available in this menu. I would select the noble talent U, do something, which is triggered when you use an ability on your servant and provides them with plus one AP on their next turn. Again, your servant should always be your highest damage dealer, and this will help ensure they have enough action points to work with. At level 6, take Seize the Initiative, which gives you an extra turn at the start of combat, and you can only use officer abilities during that turn. This talent has priority over almost everyone, including bosses and grand strategists if you have one on the team. You get two action points, which allows you to use Bring It Down and ensures that the person you want to act will always be the first person to act in combat. Spectacular. 
At level 7 you get to select your first ability and I would take move, move, move. Bring it down provides no movement points and if your damage dealer is out of position it can render that ability irrelevant. Move, move, move allows you to navigate your damage dealer into position first and then give them an extra turn for maximum effectiveness. I would also take the Imperial World talent ready to serve, which is triggered when you affect an ally with a non-damaging ability and increases their resolve by half your fellowship bonus for one round. Resolve has a big impact on how much momentum you generate, so it's helpful to stack it high and this will help you do that. At level 8, take Lasting Impression, which allows a character to keep half of the bonuses from VOC until the end of combat. Once you use VOC on a character, you cannot do it again for two rounds, and this will help your damage dealer maintain high bonuses during that cooldown period. At level 9, take the first ultimate ability upgrade which will provide extra damage that scales with your fellowship bonus and the target will gain the effect of VLC until the end of combat. Fantastic all the way around. At level 10, you'll be locked out of increasing persuasion and fellowship, so remember to switch over to lore imperium and ballistic skill. At level 11, take Focus, which is triggered when you use an ability on an ally and provides them with a bonus to perception and ballistic skill equal to your fellowship bonus. In this run, my main damage dealers will be Argenta and Ulfar, so this is perfect. Speaking of which, at level 12, pick up Take Aim, which allows one character's attack to ignore cover and have double the effective distance. This is fantastic for Agenta, whose starting bolter is rather unimpressive at long range. If that ally is under VLC, the attack will also ignore the enemy's dodge rating, and the damage cannot be reduced below a percentage amount that scales with your fellowship rating. You should also take the Imperial World Talent No No Heresy, which will give you a 10% increase to critical hit chance and armor against Xenos or Daemonic creatures while providing your allies with half of those bonuses. The drawback is your lower Xenos and lower warp scores are reduced by 200, but you weren't going to specialize in those areas anyway, so this is irrelevant. At level 13, take No Respite, which is triggered when you grant action points to an ally with an officer ability and gives them a plus one bonus to all characteristics for every AP gain until the end of combat. If you are consistently buffing the same character, the bonus will stack up very nicely. At level 14, take the noble talent You Kill It. This gives you 1 AP every time the servant kills an enemy you dealt damage to last turn. Extra AP is always a good thing. Finally, at level 15, take Upgrade 4, which provides an AP and MP bonus every time the targeted ally makes a kill. This can stack an amount of times up to your fellowship bonus, and the ability can be redirected to another target. It was already fantastic, and now it's even more useful. That finishes all your levels of officer, so now it's time to venture into your second archetype, which is Master Tactician. This archetype comes with two features, and the first one is Tactical Advantage. You get one stack of this effect for every five momentum gained by your party, and you begin combat with an amount equal to your fellowship bonus. You also get Press the Advantage, which gives you 4% additional damage for every stack of tactical advantage you have, and you lose half of those stacks. Officer already ramped up how much momentum your party gains, and this archetype will do the same thing, so this is a monster ability that significantly increases your damage, especially after it's upgraded. At level 17, take Inspire, which provides a character plus 1 damage and 1 additional damage point for every 10 stacks of TA, but you also lose half of your stacks. This effect stacks and lasts until the end of combat. Also, if your target uses Heroic Act before the beginning of your next turn, they regain 25 momentum. You can use this on yourself, but I would recommend using it on your main damage dealer every turn to stack that bonus as high as possible. At level 18, take Against All Lives, which increases the amount of TA stacks you start with by the amount of enemies you are facing. In many fights, there will be 20 or more enemies, so this is a massive boost. At level 19, you get your ultimate ability, which I won't bother discussing because it's weak and you should always use Finest Hour instead. At level 20, you get an additional action point, which is going to significantly help your action economy. You also start back on increasing fellowship. At level 21, take Hidden Advantage, which causes your abilities to work as if you had an additional amount of TA stacks equal to your fellowship bonus. Inspire will be even more powerful. At level 22, take Finish the Job, which gives you an extra attack that doesn't count towards your attack limit. However, it only does half the weapon's damage, and it can only be used against enemies that have less than 50% of their health remaining. This will assist in getting elites and bosses off the field quickly, so you definitely want it. 
At level 23, take Undisputed Advantage, which causes Press the Advantage to ignore cover and dodge. Combining this with a massive damage bonus from the buff makes you a truly deadly sniper. You can also start back to increasing persuasion. At level 24, get Solid Weapon Projectile Expert, which will make your sniper rifles even more powerful. At level 25, take in the Hero's Footsteps, which will give you an extra turn the first time an ally uses a heroic act. By now, this should be happening in every fight, so pick it up. At level 27, take Upgrade 2, even though you'll probably still never use Orchestrated Firestorm. At level 28, take Unwavering Motivation, which causes Inspire to provide one additional damage for every 10 stacks of TA. Remember, the buff stacks, so this will help your team tremendously. At level 30, you have picked up all the necessary common talents, so I would take a base skill in Commerce, but you could choose something else if you like. I haven't played Act 4 yet, but it just feels like Commerce would be useful to have at that time. In addition, pick up Lynchpin, which will give one ally a really nice bonus to resolve while also increasing the rate at which you gain TA stacks. At level 31, I like picking up Ally Coordination since it will limit the amount of friendly fire Olfar and Argenta do during burst attacks. At level 33, Joint Offensive will give you an extra TA stack every time you attack. Definitely worth the pickup. At level 34, I take Advanced Skill Commerce. Finally, at level 35, pick up the third upgrade for Orchestrated Firestorm, but still, it's not all that useful, so I would avoid deploying it in combat. Needless to say, your first exemplar talent should be Eager Subordinates to give allies a 15% bonus to damage when giving them extra turns. I would also pick up Heroism, which causes your next attack to cost zero action points whenever a heroic act is used in combat by any character. At this point in the game, you should be able to trigger this all the time. And then finally, I'd also pick up Heroic Inspiration, which causes the first ability you use after the very first heroic act used in combat to cause zero action points until the end of combat. Obviously, again, this is something you should be triggering all the time, and it's going to be really, really useful. Finally, I know some of you are concerned about gear, so I thought it'd be useful to walk through what my gear looked like at the end of Act 3. Pretty sure Alcat is adding more items and I've made some mistakes so your character could easily become more optimized. For the goggles, I have Commander's Monocle, which is triggered when an ally under my voice of command makes an attack during an extra turn and it adds a percentage damage increase equal to three times my fellowship bonus. Obviously, this is just absolutely perfect for the build. Uh, the necklace is Chartus' Pendant and provides a plus 5 bonus to Fellowship along with a plus 10 bonus to Commerce. Since I am Dogmatic or Imperialis, it also allows my Lore Imperium skill to depend on Fellowship instead of Intelligence. It also increases Lore Imperium by 10. To me, since this character is supposed to be an avid follower of the Imperium, it makes sense that he has a high ranking in that skill even though it's based off Intelligence. The armor is just regular old chainmail. I honestly never found a good set for him. Um, one of the rings is the White Signet of the Inquisition, which provides a plus 15 bonus to Persuasion and gives me an ability that can be used once per combat, providing a plus 20 bonus to Momentum, Temporary Wounds for all allies that scales with Persuasion, and it will remove burning, bleeding, and toxin effects from all allies in a 5-cell radius. This is a great bailout option if the fight is going poorly. The other ring is a Shadow Field, which makes me count as being in full cover against all ranged attacks until I am hit by one and suffer damage. Nice little bit of extra protection. The gloves are Commander's Gloves, which provide me with a stack of TA equal to the number of enemies I hit at the end of each turn. Again, perfect with this build. My Cloak of Retribution provides a 15% bonus to damage against enemies that dealt me damage in the current round. I love getting my Lick back with this character, so the bonus works perfectly. Commissar Boots is triggered when I choose an ally as a target of my ability and gives me and that ally additional MP that scales with my Fellowship bonus. Nothing crazy, but it's not bad having some extra MP. And then finally, my weapon is Sharpshooter, uh, which does up to 36 damage, has 20% armor penetration, 40% additional hit chance, a range of 11 cells, and dead eye shots do additional damage to larger enemies. Large enemies are littered throughout the game, so this bonus definitely comes in handy. It's worth mentioning that there are a couple of other things you can do on your team to really take advantage of this setup. Obviously, you want at least one character heavily focused on damage, and based on this build, you want that character to be ranged. At first, it will be Argenta for my team, but then long term, I plan to focus on Ulfar. 
Also, you want one or two frontline fighters to help ensure enemies do not close within melee distance with you. At first, I'll pair Heinrichs and Abelard together, and then long term, I am going to drop Abelard in favor of using Ulfar as my main tank. The last and rather obvious point, since it applies to all teams, is that this build really benefits from a squad that's generating momentum quickly. Highlander is the type of guy who takes a 10 point lead and makes his snowball into 40 points. That's all the information I have regarding this build. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this build and what type of build you are running for your first playthrough. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care!